Okay, welcome uh, back to the channel. Uh, today we're going to uh, do the final video, I think, on this Heritage Springer. All the work is done. There's a couple small things I got to do, but I'm not doing a video on them. You know, one is putting the windshield on and the engine guard. I'm not going to do a video on that. That's, you know, pretty easy stuff to do. So let's take a quick walk around the bike. We'll start it up, see how it sounds. And then I want to talk a little bit about some parts that were added to this of parts that I should have bought Harley OEM rather than aftermarket. So let's take a walk around and we'll check out what was done. All right, so it's all back together. Uh, as you watch the videos, front end was completely disassembled, taken apart. Front wheel bearings were repacked. Uh, we got new chrome controls up here. Risers were all Healy coiled. Uh, new mirrors. Uh, I took the bezel off the speedometer and cleaned that. That was all fogged up, put that back together. Um, but anything on this side? Well, we get some new plugs, and I'll show you the the, the uh, alternate plugs other than the Harley plugs. Nothing really done a whole lot on this side. Uh, we come over here. We got new rocker covers, top and bottom. Uh, of course, we did the twin cam, the uh, cam chain tension as which is what we wanted to do. New brake lines, front and rear. Uh, what else? Uh, new lifters. And, you know, of course, all new gaskets in the motor. The, the cylinders were taken out, rehoned. Pistons were clean. Rings were cleaned. Uh, and it sounds pretty good. So let's uh, start it up, and uh, we'll take a listen to it. Okay, so we get the fuel on. Choke out. It's a little cool in here. I think it's about 55 degrees in here. So let's uh, hear what it sounds like. Okay, so sounds pretty good. Uh, I think I'm a little low on oil actually on this, so yeah, I'm a little low on oil. So I gotta, I'm gotta, i actually gonna change the oil, but I'm not gonna do a video on that. So let's uh, talk a little bit about some of the parts that I wish I had bought OEM other than uh, aftermarket. Okay, sounded pretty good. Uh, I was a little low on oil. I added about three quarters of a quart and it started to smooth right out uh, after that. So it's been running fine. Uh, Petcock's not leaking. I didn't do a video on the Petcock installing it. If you want to see how that's done, uh, I do have a video when I did the Deluxe over there. It's the same Petcock vacuum operated. Uh, I'll put that at the end of the video. So if you want to watch and see how that's done. Carburetor went back on. Um, I did run into a problem with the Petcock and I'll go over that uh, right now. Um, this is the filter that came out of the Petcock. On the top of the Petcock, let me grab this. So this is the one that came out of the Deluxe. It's the same one that's in here. It has a filter that sits in there like that. Now over time, these things deteriorate. This, the, you know, the ethanol in the gas will eat all this stuff away. So when I pulled this out, um, now the ones that I had that, that I just bought had a cap on the top. And if you could see the holes in there it kind of sna snaps in i don't think i have one i had another one but i dropped it somewhere it's i don't know what happened to it but it's a cap that snaps into the top so as i pulled this out uh, i didn't know there was a cap on the top i just pulled it out and uh, it had to it really had a hard time coming out i actually had to get a channel locks and grab it by this post down here to pull it down when i put the new one in which was white. I don't think I have a, there was actually two that came in the kit. There was a long one and then one this size. So I took this size because this is the one that came out and I put that one back in and it had, a, I had a hard time getting it in. I actually had to put a little white grease around it. I had a hard time getting it in. When I finally got it in, I re needed to reposition it. When I pulled it down, the cap was gone. So I stuck my finger up there seeing if I could feel it 
the top of this cap is in the tank. So when I did the deluxe, the deluxe filter doesn't have a removable top. It's part of the filter. So when I pulled it down, it was on there because there's no way to take it off. I, I don't know why they made caps that were removable on this. I don't really get it. And now I have two that are in the tank and there's really, I don't see any way really of getting them out. They're not gonna come out through the gas, the gas cap. And I'll show you this. So they're not gonna come out over here by like sheer luck. And uh, where the gas gauge is over here, this just pops out. So, and there's no access to the tank except the tube that runs down to the tank for these wires that go underneath the tank. So I don't really know how to get those out. Uh, it's going to be something that I'm going to have to deal with maybe in the winter time. Uh, they, they don't really pose any problem because there's, you know, the fuel is normally with the cap on is drawn from the side. So even if this cap gets stuck in the top, it's not going to pose any problem because it's supposed to be there. So I don't really see it causing any problem. The only thing it's going to do is really make this useless because the fuel is going to go right down through the top and any particles that, that go in are going to now get inside. It could clog up that little hole in there if you see it. So that's the only concern is if you have some big pieces that get clogged in it. Now, what I'm planning on doing, I actually have to go pick it up today. I'm going to put an inline fuel filter in between the pet cock and the carburetor. So if anything does come down and it manages to get out of the pet cock, it won't get in the carburetor. And I'll probably take this apart again this winter to take the pet cock off. And I will just buy a Harley one. Now, the difference in price with the Harley one for the Deluxe cost me 30, I mean, cost me $79. This kit that I bought that had the two of these in it with the pet cock cost me $39. So by the time I have to deal with taking the tank off and trying to get everything out of the tank, I'm not even sure if I could get those caps to the other side of the tank. I don't think there's any big crossover in, on the top of this tank that it will allow it to go over. That's why you have this crossover line underneath so fuel can go from the fill side over to this side. Uh, it's not a two-piece tank. If you look at the shovel, the shovel, you have to fill both sides of the tank. It's a two-piece tank. There is a crossover in the middle, so you have to actually fill both sides of that tank when you fill it up. Uh, Sportster right here only has one side. It's one big tank. The deluxe tank is the same as this tank. It's the same type of tank. It has the, the uh, fuel gauge up here. So I don't really expect to ever get that out. I, I'll try, but I'm not really holding my breath on it. So that's a part that I would, if I had to buy it again, uh, I would buy the Harley part. Uh, the second part is the rocker covers. Now, if you watched the progress of this bike, the work I did on it, I spent probably a couple weeks trying to troubleshoot why that rear cylinder was not getting any compression. I took the, tw I took the cams out. I relined the cams. I thought maybe it was a timing issue. I, then I thought it was a gasket issue. Then I thought it was a cylinder issue. Uh, I could not figure it out. And finally, what I did was I took a caliper and I measured the aftermarket lower rocker box covers that I had, and the front one, between the front one and the back one, the back one was machined two thousandths of an inch higher than the other one that came in the kit. And that two thousandths of an inch caused the exhaust valve to stay open all the time. Even if you put it, bolted it down the way it should, torqued it down, because that was machined wrong, it kept that valve open. Uh, I ended up putting the original lower rocker uh, box top on, back on it and you can see it's starting up fine. So I probably would not buy rocker covers again aftermarket, uh, or I certainly would check them with a caliber before I put them on. Uh, the front one seems fine. The front one is the aftermarket one. I don't have an issue with it. So uh, there is a little bit of a temperature uh, difference in the front and rear cylinder. I think there's like a 20 degree temperature right now. I think it was 194 was the front and one 75 was the back. Of course, that's in, in in this environment. There's no air going over it. So anyway, those are the two pieces that I would definitely buy OEM. All the other stuff that I bought that was aftermarket, I don't think I bought anything. Uh, well, I bought the buttons, I think. The buttons for the hand controls were Harley. That was a Harley part. Those These didn't come with chrome buttons. Uh, 
trying to think what else, if I bought anything else that was OEM. I don't think it was. I think everything else was, was aftermarket. Uh, so anyway, that's, you know, that's my take on that. So as far as the plugs go, the stock plug uh, for this bike is a Harley plug, and it's 6R112. Let me see if I can get that in. I don't know well that's going to come in, but it says 6R112. The equivalent is an Autolite 4164. So the gap on these plugs is 38 to 43. I have them set to 40. And I'll check it. I'll check the plugs after, you know, maybe 100 miles to see how they're doing. I might have to increase the gap or, or decrease the gap depending upon what the plugs look like. Uh, it's going to have an oil change. I won't do a video on that. So I'm trying to figure out, you know, what the next course of action is. Uh, definitely, I got to get the bike off. I got to get it down the road and test it. Same thing with the shovel. I got to get the shovel off because I want to do an oil change in the shovel because the shovel is going to be my primary ride this summer. And then in this fall, then we'll start tearing into the shovel and getting the motor out of that and getting the motor rebuilt on that. So uh, I think that's probably going to be it. I don't think there's any more work to do on the Springer right now unless there's some catastrophic thing that has to happen. I'm going to wrap it up for this video. I got my truck back today, so the first phase of that truck is done. If you saw the shorts, uh, that I had all the mechanical work done today, so in another couple days. It's Thursday now. So on Monday, it's going to the body shop. They'll have it all week. Uh, and then uh, after that, we'll get these bikes out on the road. Because I want to have the truck here before I take any bikes out, just to make sure nothing's going to happen. Uh, you know, because I haven't really, I haven't tested the Hera Dijal, and I've only ridden the, the shovel twice since I had it. So I want to make sure everything's fine before I take it out on the road. And I have a, tr a truck here to haul if I have to with a trailer. So anyway, that's going to do it. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.